On today's World Insights with Tian Wei, experts from China and abroad unpack the crisis in Hong Kong. Is the financial hub's status as Asia's world city under threat? And we speak to former heads of states on global leadership and how cooperation can survive in the Trump era. And I'm very critical of what we see nowadays in the United States. Here is our host, Dan Wei. Hello and welcome to World Inside, coming to you from Beijing on CGTN. Let's begin today's program in Hong Kong. Residents have staged more activities in support of peace and stability in Hong Kong following violence earlier in Hong Kong International Airport. Airport operations struggle over the past several days with almost a thousand flights coming to a halt. Not to mention many of the tourists and their traveling schedules. Protesters have even assaulted tourists, reporters, and the police alike. Take a look. Hong Kong in crisis. In the 10 weeks since demonstrations first broke out, violence and disruptions have propelled the special administrative region's government to label the actions emerging signs of terrorism. The past week had seen international travelers sleep on floors as one of Asia's busiest airports canceled all outbound flights. And the image of a mainland journalist tied up by protesters invoked strong emotions against the rioters. <laughs> Calls for bringing back peace to the financial hub are growing louder. Tens of thousands of Hong Kong residents have signed online petitions calling for an end to the violence. Hong Kong's richest man made his first public comments regarding the situation on Friday. In the city's major newspapers, Li ka Shing posted ads that show a big red stop sign over the word violence, accompanied by statements such as the best intentions might lead to the worst result. According to the Hong Kong police, close to 200 policemen and women have been injured during the operations and more than 700 people have been arrested since June. The charges include unlawful assembly, illegal discharge of firecrackers and fireworks, desecrating national flags, possession of offensive weapons, criminal damage and attempted arson. On Thursday, China's ambassador to Britain, Liu Xiaoming, said that evidence shows that the situation in Hong Kong would not have deteriorated if it had not been for the interference of foreign forces. And, and the uh, majority of them have been misled. The office of the commissioner of the Chinese foreign ministry in the Hong Kong SAR also criticized certain foreign media's coverage of the Hong Kong unrest, calling a Wall Street Journal editorial full of ignorance, prejudice and arrogance. Two big gatherings are scheduled for this weekend, one in support of the Hong Kong police force and one from opposition groups confined to Victoria Park. <laughs> For more on the latest situation in Hong Kong, we are joined in Hong Kong by Professor Whitman Hung, adjunct professor of Jinan University, who was selected as one of the 10 outstanding young persons of Hong Kong earlier. Also in Beijing, joining us, Dr. Wang Jiang, postdoctoral researcher at the Institute of Law with the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. Gentlemen, welcome to our program. Uh, it seems that I have having a very young panel for this discussion, at least, it's a blessing. So let me go to you, Professor Hung, about your analysis of the latest development, particularly with the chaos uh, taking place earlier at the International Airport of Hong Kong. Okay, now, I think this whole incident, originally with this extradition bill that uh, started earlier in June, had gradually moved into a more radical and violent um, kind of expression. Uh, of course, especially um, what just happened two days ago at the Hong Kong International Airport, which were really worries a lot of uh, Hong Kong people. It really hurts Hong Kong's image as the, one of the top airport, one of the top air cargo terminals in, uh, in the world. According to some officials' observations, some of the acts 
or on the verge of terrorism or resembling uh, phenomenon of uh, terrorism. Uh, we do not want to put this hat yet yeah. onto what's going on in Hong Kong. But uh, Dr. Wang, I understand you've been researching about terrorism and acts of terrorism. You probably could help us understand better about what that word would really mean. Okay. For a couple of weeks ago, when the Hong Kong police found out uh, there is a few location to hold some of the uh, explosion material, which is called TATP, mm -hmm. and this material was used in, in mm, the terrorism attack in London and also in Paris. That gave us a warning of that could be a terrorism-related uh, instance going on. I'm sure, uh, Professor Hong, no one who loves Hong Kong yes. would love to see, would, would like to see, or would even bear to see any signs of terrorism for Hong Kong. Now, but the question is, what can the rest do besides those who already violated the law, who already demonstrated whatever political demand that they had in mind, which are different from the majority that were originally in the streets? Yeah, I think the, the, whether you call it a terrorism, an act of terrorism or not, ter the terror is real. The mm -hmm. fear is real. Okay, well, I have friends who come back on, on an airplane who are so afraid to land in Hong Kong and so afraid to leave um, the, the airport terminal and they, you know, they, they call me and, and send me messages to say, oh, I'm safe, finally I got out of the terminal. So mm -hmm. that to me is a real terror. To solve this problem, the first thing is I, I've been urging and asking the so-called opposition leaders and those people who had been behaving very peacefully, maybe, maybe we have a different kind of you know, request, or a different kind of demand, but at least everybody is expressing their, view, expressing their views in a peaceful way. These people should distance, so should cut the link with, with those people who are taking unlawful acts and making violence. And secondly is our law enforcement agencies, in particular our police, should really, you know, execute their, 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 their duties, okay, and they should uh, follow a lawful way of executing their duties and take whatever action they need to stop any of those unlawful acts. As simple as that, Hong Kong is a city under rule of law. We have always been upholding law as the most important thing. Nobody, no one, no ideology, nothing is above the law. Mm. Therefore, as a law enforcement agent, which is the police, they should, you know, use the power rendered in them to execute. Mm. Now, rule of law has been the pride of Hong Kong for many decades. And one of the things people like Hong Kong to be one of the destination for business is because of the rule of law in the city. Now, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Wang, from your perspective, how will the confidence of rule of law uh, to a certain extent in Hong Kong be re-established? Of course, that's a big question. Yeah. But at this moment, that question is becoming so relevant now. For the situation right now, I think the most uh, important thing, the priority thing, is to restore the order and the law mm. and uh, uh, give the ordinary citizen, Hong Kong citizen and even foreigners uh, a safe and peaceful orderly uh, environment back to them. And this do take time, I know, because the demonstration and uh, all the chaos was going on for quite a long time. Mm. And, but I do have a confidence under the one country, two system uh, under this principle, we, we still can reach that. One country, two system, now that's a very creative principle. And many applauded Hong Kong when they returned to the motherland in 1997. As time goes by, the basic law become, of course, the principal legal document for one country, two system to be implemented. Now, within the basic law, and the rules and regulations related to the basic law, how should we understand the relationship between the central government and the Hong Kong SAR government, as well as the apparatus for security inside Hong Kong? What kind of role are they playing in each 
and different levels. Professor, your understanding as an academic. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, um, obviously, uh, it's not just the basic law, but our constitution of China also ha is one of the foundation of what, uh, what one country, two system is, okay? Because it's uh, based on the constitution, then we have the uh, special administration region, then we have the uh, basic law. Mm. And if you look at it, one country, two system is very simple. You have a central government. It has delegated to the SAR government certain uh, power. Okay, and these power were delegated by the central government, but at the same time, to maintain law and order within this special administration region is the responsibility of the, um, you know, SAR government. Right. Okay, as well as there's a certain Article 23, which un unfortunately still has been not has not been drafted yet, which is Hong Kong, uh, Hong Kong's responsibility to uphold na national security. Mm. Okay, so. In the, in the basic law, it's very clearly that Hong, the, the SAR also has a duty to protect and maintain um, national security. Mm. Okay, but mo the, theoretically, they should have their own law being drafted and passed under Article 23, which uh, after 20 years of coming back, uh, we haven't seen that yet. Mm. So, um, so, so, so if you look at these, um, both parties, meaning the central government and the SAR government, they both have the duties and the power to maintain um, the security for the SAR as well as the whole country. Mm. Okay, but each have a different role. So for Hong Kong SAR, the main responsibility will be the local SAR government. But there's always the Article 18 of the Basic Law, which says that in the in the uh, situation of emergency the central government and the uh, actually the MPC standing committee has the right to declare emergency and also then at that time uh, nationwide law can be applied to Hong Kong. But that's which obviously, I'm not suggesting that will happen, but which means at that time then um, the, the law of the whole uh, People's Republic of China will be applicable to the SAR which originally had its own jurisdiction. Mm. Okay, on the other hand, for national security, obviously, it is the um, you know national, the central government's responsibility. But then Hong Kong SAR also has the duty to maintain and to protect national security under Article 23. So it was designed like that. So both parties, a first of all, from power-wise central government delegation to SAR government, from duty and power-wise, um, each has more one, focus on one more, but also has a responsibility to to support the other. Right. Dr. Wang, uh, before we go, I do want to ask for your help about legal issues as well. As to, at this point, what should be the best option in terms of at what level the security and peace of SAR should be guaranteed and what support at different levels should be provided for that central role? Okay, uh, so for the situation right now, I think uh, it is still the matter of the Hong Kong public security issue here. And uh, uh, but in the future, if the violence was escalating and also let's say there is a, a terrorism activity involved, or even we claim that there is an emergency situation right there, uh, then that will be escalating to the uh, national security issue, mm. which same as the professor just pointed out, uh, both the Hong Kong local government and also the central government do have the responsibility to protect the national security. So I think in the future, uh, I, 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 I would say I, I, uh, if it remain with the public security issue in Hong Kong, mm. would be a good sign. But if that rising up become national security issue, uh, then I think we still have the, uh, enough power and preparation to deal with the situation right The there. tools to yeah. deal with it. We hope it will not be escalated to that degree because it's really the minority of those that are trying to 
sway the agenda of the majority of the people in Hong Kong, which would be very dangerous. For now, I want to thank the two of you, uh, gentlemen, for joining us and uh, help us to understand your various perspectives, uh, Whitman Hong and Wang Jiang. Thank you so much, gentlemen.